In this video, I'm going to be explaining the complete timeline of Simon Petrikov, aka the Ice King, from start to end. I chose to make this video because Adventure Time is really well known for its intricate lore, and the character that I believe best shows this is the Ice King. His story spans over a thousand years, as well as over 10 seasons of television. If this type of content interests you, don't forget to subscribe. Anyways, to start, I need to explain the crown. During ancient times, there was a man named Urgence Evergreen, a selfish yet very powerful ice elemental accompanied by his apprentice Gunther, a reptilian creature that he had imbued with consciousness, who he has not yet taught magic. We meet Urgence as he journeys with Gunther to meet the other three elementals, Candy, Slime, and Fire. Throughout this journey, we see how poorly Urgence treats Gunther, and how Gunther sees Urgence in a godlike stature, never questioning his authority over him. The elementals meet to discuss the upcoming event of the Catalyst Comet, a comet which strikes the Earth every thousand years, serving as a catalyst of change to the world. The one in question has a particular aura of destruction, serving as the incarnation of pure evil and the destruction of all life. The other three elementals all agree to allow the comet to strike as even though the comet will kill them, the elements they embody will continue. Urgence, on the other hand, goes against the natural order and seeks to stop the comet so he could save his own life. He freezes the other three elementals and travels to Magwood to steal the rubies required to create a crown which has the ability to grant the wearer's deepest desire. He planned to create the crown so he could use it to stop the comet from striking, but shortly after the crown is fully created, he's attacked by a creature which immobilizes him. Them, meaning the only way left to stop the comet is for Gunther to be the one to wear it. But because Gunther is untrained, and due to his lack of experience and childlike nature, Gunther's deepest desire is to become Urgence, who he sees as a powerful ice wizard who bosses him around, and so this wish is binded to the crown as the comet strikes. The crown is imbued with Gunther's final wish, meaning anyone who wears it will be granted with the powers of ice and snow, as well as functional immortality transforming into Gunther's view of Urgence Evergreen, or what we know to be the Ice King. Years later, we meet a man named Simon Petrikov, a professor of archaeology studying to become an antiquarian, a specialist of ancient artifacts. Simon was ridiculed for his belief in magical objects, as the majority did not believe. After one of Simon's presentations, a younger woman named Betty Groff, a fan of his research, who he had met once before in a library, approaches him, asking if he could sign her book. During this encounter, Betty points something out to Simon that he hadn't realized. The runes on one of the artifacts he found could serve as clues to find something he's been looking for. Impressed by her intuition, Simon asks Betty to join him on a six-month expedition. She agrees, and on this expedition, they end up finding the Enchiridion, a very powerful artifact which will gain them notoriety and validate Simon's field of specialty. Betty forces Simon to take full credit for the discovery while she begins planning her trip to the Outback. A few weeks after this, Simon finds a note that Betty left in the book. The note confesses her love to him and states that she wishes to travel with him more. This note causes Simon to run to the bus stop where Betty is about to start her trip. Because of this last minute change, Betty cancels her trip and their relationship begins. As their relationship progresses, Betty learns more about the magical properties of Ou through the Enchiridion, something that will become very important later. A few years into their relationship, Simon purchases a strange crown from a dock worker in northern Scandinavia. This crown, of course, is the Ice Crown, which currently is not bound to any user, meaning the next person to wear it will be turned into the Ice King. Simon, unaware of the crown's power, jokingly puts it on his head, instantly binding him to the curse. This causes him to experience unsettling visions and lose his consciousness. Although he has no recollection of his actions, what he did while under the influence of the crown was enough for Betty to flee, leaving Simon alone to succumb to the curse. At this time, Simon believes this is the last time he will have seen Betty. Through the tapes that Simon creates, we learn that since he took off the crown, the effects were not instantaneous. He can still retain some semblance of sanity when he is not wearing the crown. But as time goes on, we see him lose his body and his mind to the curse, slowly deteriorating as he transforms. The last we see of him, Simon is scared of who he is becoming, acknowledging that his mind is impartial and that he no longer has the clarity to to save himself. 
Before Simon fully succumbed to the curse, there was another very important event. The Mushroom War was the Adventure Time equivalent of what would have happened if the Cold War escalated, essentially being World War III, with the technology available in the mid-90s. The Mushroom War killed the majority of humans, and those who survived were left struggling against the nuclear winter in the harsh conditions that they were left in, as well as the mutate creatures which now roam the land. At some point after the war, Simon discovered Mercy, a young girl who he had found in the rubble, and decided to look after her. Simon protected her at all costs, but due to the increase of monsters attacking them, Simon had to use the crown to protect them, which led to an increase in the speed at which he was transforming, having moments where he was fully lost, being more Ice King than himself. Once he reached a point where he no longer believed he could help Marceline, he recorded one last tape while she watched, and left her to be picked up by her biological father, Hunson Abadir. While Simon traveled alone, he was fully lost to the crown, dissociating completely from his past self, no longer even recognizing his own name. Due to his critical moment losing Betty, the Ice King has a subconscious desire to get her back, which manifests in him kidnapping princesses hundreds of years later. Eventually, he fully gives in to the curse, and Simon is trapped in this state for the next 900 years. 996 years into insanity, we find the Ice King in a new world occupied by magic, which we know as U. The Ice King is spying on high-ranking wizards, when suddenly an entity called Bella Noche, a being made of pure anti-magic, is summoned. Bella Noche temporarily disables all magic in the area, including the curse inflicted on Simon. This means Simon regains his sanity, but due to being over a thousand years old at this point, his body begins to give out on him. As his last act, he finds his ancient library, where he kept all of his research. Using Marceline's help, he opens a portal to the past, so he could explain to Betty what happened, and talk with her one last time before he dies. We see Betty in hiding the same day Simon pawned the crown, and after Simon explains what happened, Betty assesses the situation, and jumps through the portal, being transported a thousand years into the future when she finds out that Simon is dying. She vows to save him, but to do that, she needs to prolong his death. Using the carpet Simon stole, Betty flies to Bella Noche, defeating her to reverse the anti-magic, causing Simon to revert back to the Ice King, but giving Betty the time required to figure out how to save him. After everything goes down, she's seen from afar observing the Ice King, before flying away to learn more about U. Eventually, Betty becomes kind of an assistant to Magic Man, the insane magic user who is banished from Martian society for tormenting their people. During an experiment where Magic Man attempts to become the new leader of Mars using the old helmet, Betty is hooked up to Magic Man in a ritual that transfers power. But because Finn and Jake intervene, Betty absorbs all of Magic Man's power, and with that power comes Magic Man's insanity. This leaves Magic Man a normal person, and grants Betty all of Magic Man's magic. Using her new powers, Betty disappears, now sharing the same inflection and appearance of old Magic Man. Although she has Magic Man's madness, it seems she was able to bear control it, as the next time we see her, she kidnaps Gunther, Ice King's penguin, and lures him out to take his crown. We see Betty in the shadows making a few alterations to the crown, before handing it back to the Ice King. We find out through Princess Bubblegum that Betty has inserted an artificial version of herself into the crown, which is currently trying to reprogram it. This becomes Betty's first attempt to fix Simon, but obviously it does not work. Around the same time, it's revealed that the four elementals from before the Great Mushroom War faced a very similar problem to what Urgent's Evergreen faced during his time period. The elementals from this time period didn't have as much magic due to the state of the world, but they did have a similar premonition of incoming disaster. The ice elemental, Patient Saint Pym, wants to prevent the disaster or save herself, just like Urgent's. She freezes herself and sinks to the bottom of the ocean, and unlike Urgent's, she manages to survive. Now that she's resurfaced a thousand years later, she plans to use a spell which will increase the power of all four elementals, but by doing this, she will change everything in O. During Betty's second attempt to save Simon, Patience freezes her to use as a magic battery due to the tremendous amounts of energy inside of her. Her plan manages to succeed, O is temporarily split into its four elemental components, granting her much more power, and balancing the world in her view. After being rescued by Finn, Jake, and the Ice King, 
Betty claims she could use the Enchiridion to fix U. She gives Finn the task of collecting all four elemental gems, but once he collects them, Betty betrays him. She pushes Finn off of the carpet, and she reveals that she actually needed the gems to use the book to travel back before Simon Pawn the Crown so she could save him while also preventing the Great Mushroom War. But before she succeeds, the Ice King stops her, resulting in her being transported to Mars, where she is put on trial for attempting to change the timeline. She's put through trials which attempt to reason her into accepting loss, because Normal Man also went mad after losing his wife hundreds of years ago it being the reason that he became Magic Man. When it seems like she has finally learned her lesson, she goes to Normal Man and explains a plan which could bring back Simon as well as Normal Man's wife. This plan isn't explained until the finale, when we see Normal Man, Betty, and Maja performing a ritual high above the battleground. This isn't focused on until the war ends, when the ritual is completed, which summons the multiversal being known as Golb, the most powerful entity in Adventure Time, who is foreshadowed in the flashbacks to Betty reading the Enchiridion. Golb is a being made from pure chaos, having nearly infinite energy. He was previously seen in the episode Puhoi, where Finn enters a pocket dimension and lives an entire lifetime before the dimension is seemingly destroyed by Golb. Betty begins to harness Golb's power, but when Ice King tries to stop her, her intense emotions cause Maja the Sky Witch, the person she was using as a magic battery, to be overloaded, causing her to explode, launching Finn, Betty, and the Ice King into Golb's mouth. The group begins to be digested, but because of how Golb's digestion works, they are slowly broken down into their most basic forms, while the walls shrink in. We see Betty lose her magic and her madness, while the Ice King turns back to Simon. We see the crown lose its power, while everyone becomes who they are at a base level. On the outside, the others manage to make an opening to them, allowing them to escape. But Betty realizes that the crown has reverted, meaning it can grant another wish. Knowing that they could all die if Golb isn't banished, Betty stays and puts on the crown. She attempts to wish for Golb to be banished, but he is too powerful for this. As she gets crushed, she realizes that the crown can only grant the wearer's deepest desire, and that her deepest desire is to keep Simon safe. She cannot banish Golb, but what this wish allows is for her to merge with him, saving Simon, who is finally free from the curse, at the cost of her human form. But now that Betty has saved Simon, Simon obviously wants to do the same. Years later, we find Simon, spiraling into depression as he tries to make contact with Betty. Eventually, we find an older Simon, now with some white hairs, doing a similar ritual to Betty to summon Golb. The ritual fails, instead transporting him to Fiona and Cake. We learn that the reason this happened is because Prismo created Fiona and Cake and hid them inside the Ice King's mind due to his magic and how the Ice King was basically immortal. When the Ice King lost his magic, so did Fiona and Cake's world. The Ice King eventually agrees to put the crown back on so he could save Fiona's universe. He rationalizes that if he can't save Betty, he might as well save someone. Moments before this, however, Betty opens a portal to Simon. The two are finally reunited, but in much different forms. Betty uses her powers to show Simon the sacrifices that she's made, and it's not until then that Simon realizes that all of her attempts would be in vain if Simon were to put the crown back on. This gives Simon a sense of closure, knowing that his life is all Betty ever wanted, and that if he continues to live, it would be the only way that they could both have what they wanted. After a thousand years, they still aren't together, but their shared madness is finally over. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see similar content, because this is my first video, but I will be making more soon. Anyways, see you later.